Hey guys, I'm back. Weekly review of what happened this past weekend with the playoffs. All three series, Truck, Xfinity, and Cup, are now on the same page until the end of the season. There's two more races left. That's what I said. Two more races. We're going to Phoenix this weekend. I'll be there all weekend for the truck, Xfinity, and trucks, and um, X Cup Series. Can't speak today. Um, so I'll be there all weekend. I'll be in the pits uh, Friday and Sunday. And let me review Texas for you. If you didn't watch, Trucks and Xfinity ran this weekend as well. Truck series. Um, Johnny Sauter, who drives the 21 truck for GMS Racing. Sh Sh Team Chevy won uh, the race at Texas and locked himself into the Final Four at Homestead and going for an another championship. He won championship last year, I believe. Back to back. So he's going for back to back championships. But another favorite for the championship in the truck series is Christopher Bell. And that's the only one that really stands out to me. The other ones are kind of iffy. But those two are pretty much a solid lock-in for Homestead, my choose choice for champ to win the championship is probably Bell, but I wouldn't mind if Solder won back to back championships. So moving on to Xfinity, Xfinity of course there was Cup drivers in it, and everyone, not everyone, but some people continue to whine about this issue. It's not really an issue; it's just an annoyance that people keep talking about. Which is why I'm saying it's annoying. Um, people don't understand the concept of cup drivers in the Xfinity series. So let me run this by you and see if this makes sense to you why they're in the series. They've been in the series for as long as I've been alive. Probably longer. And I'm 26 years old. Um, they bring big sponsors to the sport. They bring money to the Xfinity series. Whether people like it or not, without the Cup drivers, we don't have an Xfinity series. Yes, it's where names are made, but names are made based on competing against the best. Like, it's a stepping stone and up to the Cup series. This is where you prove yourself and see if you're ready for the cup series or not like n n notable names that have gone from xfinity to the cup series somewhat recently chase came up from the xfinity series won the championship in 2014 most popular driver rookie of the year uh, william byron will soon be in the cup car next year in the 24 car and he's running for a championship currently. Um, we got Eric Jones, who won a truck series title not too long ago, and is now in a cup car as a rookie. Um, that's you get my gist. There's like a, a lot of drivers that have gone through the cup, through Xfinity to the cup side, who've done fairly well. Um, my point I'm trying to get at, without me rambling, is Xfinity drivers have said many, 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 many times that they become better drivers when they race against the experienced veterans of the sport of the Cup Series. Like, for example, the one race that stands out in my mind that really, this was honestly a great race, was the Michigan race, where Danny Hamlin and um, William Byron were battling for the lead. And 
And that was just, that was some good hard racing. And that's why we have cup drivers in that series is for Xfinity drivers like Byron to sh prove himself and show him that, show everyone that, hey, I can compete against an 11 year veteran in the cup series as a 19 year old uh, teenager. And, um, then he went on the next weekend to win at Iowa for his first race. Then he won again at Daytona, beating some cup guys, and won again at Indy against a cup driver as well. He He's beaten Logano. He's beaten Kyle Busch. He's beaten... Menard, who's kind of irrelevant, but um, there's many of the top cup drivers he's beaten a couple of times, which is why he's moving up to the cup level so quickly, which I'm still a little hesitant about, but we'll see how Byron does in a cup car with very little to no experience at all, but anyway... Um, cup drivers are essential for that, to that series because it helps the drivers, younger drivers and drivers who are in, already in, in the series for a while become better drivers and that's pretty much the point I'm getting at and some people are just saying quickly ban all cup drivers from the series, it's not fun watching them but I'm like, that makes the race like how are these drivers who are in the series full time going to learn and gain experience? Excuse me. If they don't compete against someone better than them, you can't compete against someone who's at the same level as you and not learn anything at all. So that's my gist for people who say ban them, need a history lesson, get your sh crap together. And stop saying stupid shit. Sorry, stupid crap. <laughs> anyway, Eric Jones won that race. Blaney came in second. No one so far in the Xfinity series have, and no Xfinity regulars have won a race in the playoffs yet. Like, and that's, that baffles me, but the top three drivers who are pretty much, I think, a lock for Homestead are. Sadler, Byron, and Allgaier, three Chevys from JRM, who honestly became the class of the field the last couple of years. Well, actually not last couple, last few years since um, Chase was in the series in on on that team and won a championship for them, their first championship. And, yeah, so... Texas was eh. It's never really the most exciting race, but during the cup race, not much happened. Larson's car went up in flames again, and it's his third straight DNF. So it was first Dega, and then last week at Martinsville, and then this week at Texas. So, to, he's not in the playoffs anymore, so it doesn't really matter to him. <laughs> and um, so, we all saw that Mr. Toyota can do no wrong. Mr. Mile and a Half can lost Sunday's race to Harvick. Who is going after his second championship of his career? His first one came in 2014 when he was driving a Chevy. Now he's driving a Ford. So, still with Stuart Haas, number four car. And, um, Harv, not Harvick, Truex, who NASCAR keeps saying is. The best ever on Mountain House was just not a true statement because he's not. They're just trying to make him sound like their golden boy, and it's really, really annoying. 
even though he's won seven races this season. So, anyway, excuse my hatred towards Toyota. I don't like them. I'm just glad someone besides a Toyota and, and um, Kyle Busch or Truex won yesterday. So, we have three locked into the championship. Truex got in on points because he has he won some of those damn stages and during the regular season. So he's a lock. So it doesn't matter what happens at Phoenix next week because he's already locked in. So it's a five drivers battling for one spot to go to Homestead. We got uh, Brad Keselowski to Ford in the number two car. We've got Hamlin. He needs to F off because he's an asshole. Um, excuse my language. I still don't like him. Yes, I'm bitter. Call me a crybaby. Call Chase fans crybabies, but we're still bitter. Hamlin is a butt. <laughs> Anyways, so it's Brad, Hamlin, and then Blaney, who I hope makes it if my driver Chase doesn't make it. And then, of course, Chase Elliott. And then Jimmy Johnson, who had a very, very weird, bad race at Texas. And normally, Texas is his playground. That's his That's his track along with Dover. Like, he had such a bad race. He finished I don't know, 27th, three laps down. You don't expect that out of a seven-time champion at his... At his track. That's like his track. And he just had nothing. And Chase finished eighth after battling a loose car the entire race. He said it was not the best race for him. But that was his fourth straight top ten at Texas. The first two races he's got a um, back-to-back top fives. Then earlier this year, he finished ninth, and this past weekend, he finished eighth. So he's him and Jimmy are in a must-win situation because they're so deep in the hole on points, thanks to Hamlin for Chase. So, yeah. Anyway, and then Blaney, he just needs a solid day. He's not too far out. He can, if he wins a couple of stages and finishes well, he may get in on points but if Brad if Brad has a bad day then I don't know it's wonky but it's gonna be exciting this weekend I'm gonna be at the races all three races this weekend to see who gets that final spot in the final four and who all what drivers make it in I'm so excited I could see Alex Bowen race this weekend, which I'm so excited for because he's going to be one of my drivers next year, along with all of Hendrick, of course. I'm a big Hendrick fan. Um, I've been a Hendrick fan since I was like seven. And since Jeff Gordon, that's my boy, that's my man, that's my driver of all time. Then there's Jimmy, who's going to be the veteran of the team. Then by not by then Bowman, who's gonna be his second oldest, which is weird, because he's only twenty four. And then there's Chase, who'll be twenty two by next year, and then Byron, who'll be twenty. <laughs> that's just that's just crazy to me that a, there's three twenty something year olds with a only one forty year old driver. It just it baffles me, but. It's going to be exciting. Chevy's going to kick some ass next year with the new car, the Camaro. Gah, I can't wait. But anyway, if you see me at, at Phoenix, come say hi. Don't be afraid to say hi to me. I'll be in the pits f- most of Friday and most of Sunday um, before the race starts, of course. And... And then be getting picking up some chase gear, so I'll keep you updated and wait for my review from Phoenix.